the ANC's Bata Bili Dlamini ending that report by Aisha Ismail in Port Elizabeth. Um, I think we have the uh, head of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts, Umkuru Leko Tlengwara, with us now. I hope it's on a better phone line. We reported yesterday on extensive corruption within the South African police services, and talking to the committee was the National Police Commissioner, Kekla Sitoli. Mr. Tlengwara, good afternoon to you, and welcome. I'll put the same question to you again. Were you shocked by the depth of corruption, particularly among senior ranks, that was disclosed yesterday? Oh, not at all, Mr. Max. Um, we, in fact, the context is that we have arrived at the point of reporting which we have because of the pressure that we have been exerting on the SAPS because the audit outcomes have been indicating shortcomings in that particular regard. And it had actually been confirmed by the extent of fruitless, wasteful and irregular expenditure um, and a series of questions around contract management. So for us, it was very clear from the onset that we are dealing here with a situation of an institution that has been infiltrated by corruption at various levels um, of leadership and management mm -hmm. and, of course, going on to the lower rank. <clears throat> and, of course, we're not surprised further because... Um, the Deputy National Commissioner responsible for human resources is currently in court, uh, General Mgwenya herself. And so the shortcomings around um, disciplinary processes in disciplinary management arose out of the fact that, in our view, there was a laissez faire attitude towards dealing with these things. And so when we began mounting the pressure on the SAPS, they had to go back and actually begin a process of collation of these things and begin a process of charging people. So we are not surprised, but of course we remain disappointed at the fact that the SAPS, which is the guard of the guard, finds itself in the kind of situation that it is. But at the same time, it's good that they are now taking steps in the right direction to wrong the rights of the past, because the steps themselves have not been spared from the clutches of state capital. And so um, these kind of things would have happened in a crippled institution. And the fact that now we are very pointed in so far as what are we dealing with, who are we dealing with, uh, makes it easy for reporting and, of course, for consequence management. And that is why we are saying to the National Commissioner, clean up the mess. Make sure that you don't bungle the, the cases and so they have to build up the case management system. But also we want recoveries in so far as what the state um, would have lost. And this is, of course, a two-pronged approach, the internal processes and the criminal cases. And our message to the commissioner is clear. We want the blue um, uniform um, turned into orange overalls for all those that have been in the wrong. And I think that uh, many South Africans would endorse those sentiments. You, you talk about corruption infiltrating the SAP. PS. Have you got your head around what kind of climate exists within the service that allows that to happen at such a high level? Again, I'm looking at the ranks here. Um, two lieutenant generals, three major generals. They're operating with gross impunity, aren't they? No, most definitely. Um, the issue is that in the absence of effective systems of effective control, in any institution are bound to have these collapses. And secondly, if individuals in positions of power and authority do not subject themselves to the normal processes of doing things and become the systems as individuals, they become rogue and they begin building little systems on which they operate. You're dealing here with a institution that has had a high uh, rate uh, turnover rate in so far as uh, management and leadership is concerned. You know the instability that has characterized the office of the National Commissioner. And so all those things combined had an institution which would every now and again find itself on autopilot because it was leaderless. And so stability is key towards turning the SAPS around. And what we have seen right. over the past few months is actually consistent with a, an institution which is going to turn the right. corner. Mr. Flengo, I'm just going to squeeze in one more question if I can. Sure. Regrettably, time is against us. Are you happy, are you satisfied that uh, the Independent Police Investigative Directorate is sufficiently staffed and resourced to pursue the kind of strategy that you're proposing here? 
Well, the issues that the IP will have to deal with are not within the purview of these cases. Here, we're dealing mainly with uh, SCM-related uh, uh, issues and financial issues, which are not necessarily the purview of, the, of IP. But be that as it may, the issue of capacity in, in IP remains of fundamental concern because some of the issues have got a ripple effect in so far as how IP will be able to respond to these things. But also at the same time, you are dealing with rogue elements. I mean, one of the cases is where um, police officers are aiding and abetting fugitives and inmates uh, and so on. So those are things that IP would have to deal with. But in the main, these are financial matters which therefore require um, the law enforcement agencies, particularly the Hawks, SIU and NPA, to actually be at the forefront of the prosecution required in these spaces. Mkululeko Tlengwa, thank you very much indeed, Chairman of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts.